lights dawn again in our galaxy. And soon, the rays of hope will shine its light on yet another planet. Huntsman is finally out, and, uh, well... It was to be expected, Megacorp is coming to you at some time in the near future, and uh, it's going to be quite a doozy, as of course comes out in tandem with the 2.2 Le Guin expansion, the one that everybody's been waiting for, because, well, it's time to say goodbye the planetary tiles and say hello to the new planetary system. That's not what we're going to be talking about today. We've been laying all that stuff out recently in all the dev diaries no we're going to be talking instead about the new features that are going to be part of megacorp which is well pretty expansive first of all there is corporate culture so first of all that is basically a new type of governmental system similar to say your democratics your oligarchy your robots etc corporate culture is here and uh, you can now to quote unquote, conduct business on a galaxy wide scale with a host of new civics. And civics in particular is what's going to make this really, really interesting. Now, corporate culture apparently is basically set up, or at least megacorps are set up in such a way to make as much money as humanly possible or xenonly possible, um, as well, you cannot really produce a reasonable amount of resources but you will be making a lot of money by generating um well using trade value and having branch offices on planets and branch offices are basically uh, a outpost that you put inside of a planet and basically be like hey there's no so much resources being made here let's take some off the top and if you have certain types of civics things get interesting very very Quickly. So yeah, the new corporate authority is coming in, and it seems fascinating. So a lot of trade focus, a lot of tall playing here, and basically saying, hey, those resources that you're generating, I would like some of that as well. And of course, there's a little bit of that money that also goes towards your host empire, so you can be a corporate uh, parasite as much as you want. But of course, you're here for those civics that uh, we uh, already discussed what could you do? Well, for instance, how about a corporation that has a criminal heritage? Criminal heritage means that you can have unique buildings on your branch offices that increase crime. Why does it increase crime? Because, of course, you are of criminal heritage and any level of crime that is higher than a certain amount will generate you more money, starting at 0.5% of trade value all the way up to 1.5 times the amount that you can get. So, yeah, you want to build some buildings there? Well, you can do all sorts of uh, hilarious things with that. You want to build a drug lab? Yeah, you can do that. You want to build a smuggler's den? Oh, boy. Chop shops? You got spaceships that you want to turn into scrap? Yeah, you, you can do that, too. Underground clubs for, uh, God knows, hedonistic xeno-compatibility garbage? Well, that's totally possible. And it all increases crime, which means that you will get more money as of that criminal heritage there's also of course something that is slightly more spiritual let's talk about the uh, gospel of, of the masses where you can be a mega church and that's right you can be a mega church where you can um, yeah basically say hey everybody here we would like some tithe because well we're a mega church and we would like to have money and any sort of building that you build can increase uh, ethics attractions towards spiritualism so that you can get even more money by getting tithe and ironically enough you can get gospel of the masses combined with criminal heritage where you become the most delightfully corrupt church that you can think of that runs off of crime and tithe as well <laughs> Absolutely delightful and really looking forward to corporate culture. And there's, of course, a slew more civics going to be available as well uh, for this particular setup. And in all honesty, I'm really looking forward to this. It, it really adds a new way of playing the game as well as a case of corporate warfare. And they get a new CB called Hostile Takeover. So you can subjugate your... Well, other empires e e more easily. There is also this uh, special CB where they become your 
uh, corporate vassals, I want to say, and then they will have to pay you 25% of income tax, basically 25% of their income, which is very similar to the old domination civic uh, where you would get more resources, basically the protection racket set up. And there's a particular civic for that as well. In addition, uh, there's going to be three no new voice packs. There is the Ruthless Conglomerate, which is basically Wayland yutani There is the Worker, who are effectively communists, and the Slick Corporation, which is basically Apple in space. Good times. Then we have a new type of... Well, I want to say outpost sort of thing, uh, similar to what the traders are or the artisans or the scientists enclaves. We're going to have something called the Caravaner Fleets, which are a combination between the Nomad Fleet and the uh, particular outpost, where basically there is a system somewhere that's, that sends fleets around in brand, with brand new graphics as well. And basically, they're nomadic interstellar traders. And basically, you can go in and say, hey, I would like to um, trade some stuff with you. And you can get something really good out of it. Like, say, you give them a little bit of tech and they give you something in return. It's not really clear on what they can actually give you. The developers want to keep that up in the air. But we're definitely going to disseminate that completely once the uh, expansion is out. And in addition, you can contact them directly and say, hey, um, do you have anything else we can do? Well, you can play the slots. Yeah, uh, you can also do something called open a reliquary where you can buy caval uh, cavalier coins and then buy what is referred to as a booty box by the developers and open it up and who knows what's inside. The example that we were giving on the stream earlier today was uh, there was nothing in it and those cavalier coins were completely um, useless. So that's great, but at least it gives you a, uh, a feeling of pride and an accomplishment, which is kind of nice. So yeah, Caravan Air Fleets, uh, they got brand new models, they got a new building in space, which is pretty cool as well. Let's talk about Galactic Slave Market, so you can buy and sell pops on an industrial scale, which is great because you can... Uh, well, you can use them as livestock. That's great. You can uh, feed them. That's, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. So, yeah, if you're egalitarian, you can just set them free and have pops on your planet. Or, uh, you know, you send them into the Dilithium mines to mine resources until the end of time. Uh, there is, well, you have to, you get additional ascension perks. And we're going to go into that a little bit deeper. And which, one of which is the Yuka Monopolis. Or the, um, basically you can build hive worlds, which is great. The Yuka Monopolis, the pla city of planets where you can have over 200 to 300 pops on one planet. And basically you have a mega city that only consists of buildings where people live. There is no production on that planet. And you'll have to obviously import massive amounts of food. But at least it generates insane amounts of money. Ironically enough, there was something that was not even uh, alluded to in any of the previews, and this is really curious. We're going to get more megastructures. Now, we haven't seen megastructures since uh, 1.7 Utopia, and back then, obviously, we got the Dyson Sphere, the Ring World integration into uh, the Galactic Wonder setup, and like the Eye in the Sky, the Panopticon, uh, the Research Wings, etc. However, uh, we're going to get some new items, such as the Matter Decompressor, where you put a facility around a black hole, which just generates matter or minerals, because that's the thing. The Mega Art Installation, which gets you a gigantic amount of unity. Strategic Coordination Center for military improvements. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's, it's incredibly cool to see that these things are actually coming in and there's going to be more mega structures in the game, which is um, incredibly cool. Incredibly cool. Uh, let's take a look here. What else? Well, obviously, we already talked about the... Um, Megacorp and stuff like that, but normal Megacorps can have virtual entertainment studios, you can have, uh, you can build amusement megaplexes and that sort of thing, uh, which is kind of cool, you know, it's not the sort of thing that you would want to do if you were a um, criminal heritage and all that stuff. Uh, there are original models for a lot of things. Um, you can get random trade deals, you can have trade deals with other empires, um, and that sort of thing. 
But we're going to get a, a f bigger overview of what we can expect of this expansion in an upcoming depth diary. But I wanted to keep you guys in the loop about what is going on with Megacorp because it's coming. And also, it's apparently available for pre-order as well. And it's going to clock in at $19.99 US dollar and or local equivalent. So it is um, probably one of the more expensive ones. But in all honesty, looking at what is coming in combination with 2.2 Le Guin, I think this is totally going to be worth it. And I'm really looking forward to it. If you got any ideas on uh, how to properly execute corporate culture and synergize your opportunities, then I leave a comment below. Uh, of course, we always strive for additional likes and, um, you know, we, we like to keep our rating up and running. So uh, please do that as well while we are at it. So, yeah. Uh, get back into the discussion down in the comments, and then we'll leave it at this point. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take good care of yourselves, and as always, eat shutter.